Hi, I'm Nikki, and welcome to my channel. My channel is focused on exploring video game development using tools like Unity, Logic Pro X, and Blender. This is the first in a series of videos dedicated to learning Unity's animation system. Throughout the series, we're going to learn how to use a free Adobe platform called Mixamo. We'll get a deeper understanding of how Unity's animation system works. And by the end, we'll even be able to import our own Blender characters and reuse the animations from Mixamo using Unity's animation system. In this first video, we're going to get set up with the Adobe Mixamo platform and start to understand all the export settings that Mixamo has to offer. Now, a short backstory. A while back, I discovered another YouTube channel called Mix and Jam, which is hosted by a developer named Andre. His videos are dedicated to replicating some of the main features in games like Mario, Zelda, Animal Crossing, and pretty much anything cool that you can think of. It's seriously impressive work, and I highly recommend that you check out his channel. But the point of me bringing this up is that he's obviously not using the animations and the characters from those games. He's often using a character model and animations downloaded from a platform called Mixamo. Now what is Mixamo? Mixamo is a completely free Adobe platform where anyone with a username and password can download a variety of different character models and hundreds of animations. All you need to do is sign up and you're good to go. And like I said, it's completely free, which makes this an excellent tool for learning and prototyping. So go ahead and sign up. Once you are logged in, you're going to land on either the Characters or the Animations tab. We're going to start with the Characters tab, so if you're in the Animations, you can switch on over. There are a lot of options, but I personally like to use either the X or the Y bot character models. They're perfectly generic and great for prototyping. All you need to do is press on the character icon and it will automatically be set as the active character when you're viewing all the animations. Switching to the Animations tab, let's take a look at some of the options. There really are a ton to choose from, and for our project, we're only going to pick three. An idle animation, a walk animation, and a run animation. If you are following along, you can choose any that looks similar to the ones I've chosen myself. But when you find an animation that you like, press download, and you'll be presented with a list of four drop-down menus titled Format, Skin, Frames Per Second, and Keyframe Reduction. For Format, we're going to go with FBX for Unity. After a little bit of research, I found a post on the Adobe forums which stated that the difference between FBX and FBX for Unity is an optimization in texturing. For this reason, we're going to select FBX for Unity. Frames per second, we have three options, 24, 30, or 60. All three are acceptable because Unity's animation system uses what's known as interpolation. But what is interpolation? When talking about animation frames, interpolation means estimating the animation values between frames. Here's an example. If we have the character's arm pointing straight out, and then rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, if we then insert an additional frame between these two frames, Unity will calculate that the hand should be at 45 degrees through linear interpolation. I personally select 30, as a higher frame rate results in significantly increased file size. Moving on to keyframe reduction, Keyframe reduction will remove frames in the animations which have values that aren't different enough from its surrounding frames. Again, using our character's arm as an example, if in the first frame we have the arm pointed directly outwards, but in the second frame we only move it slightly up or down, there's a chance that this change is too small. If the difference between where we originally had our arm and where it is moved to isn't larger than a specific value, then the second frame will not be included in the animation data. The key point is that this actually happens on import of the animation. So the animation keyframes that you see in Unity have already been reduced. I actually found an external GitHub link to an open source animation engine called Oz Animation that lets you play around with keyframe reduction in a browser. You can see clearly that by changing the tolerance level, the file size is dramatically increased and decreased. However, removing keyframes can also lead to inaccurate animation, as most animation systems will interpolate between the remaining frames and try to fill in the gaps. For today, we're just going to set keyframe reduction to none. Skinning is a lot more simple than frames per second and keyframe reduction. By selecting With Skin, we are just including the 3D model in the file. And the last setting that we need to remember is the In Place checkbox. For our two animations that are moving, be sure to check this box, otherwise the character will move when the animation is being played in Unity. I want to be clear that this isn't wrong, it's just not what we're currently looking to use at the moment. Cool, that's all we need for Mixmo, but feel free to play around with the other animations on the site before moving on to the next step. Opening up a new Unity project, I'm going to title it Learning Animations. 
Once that's done loading, we can delete any of the default game objects, and we'll just add a plane for the ground as reference. The last thing we're going to cover in this video is importing the files. I like to organize my files into a clean structure because the assets tab can get very messy really quickly. For this project, I'm going to make an animations folder and a Mixamo folder. We'll import our downloaded Mixamo files into the Mixamo folder. If you haven't done it before, importing assets to Unity is pretty easy. You can either right click inside the assets tab and navigate to import new asset, or you can simply drag and drop the FBX files that we downloaded into the assets tab. We'll do this for all three animations we downloaded. You will notice that one of my assets doesn't look like the other two. This is because I did not include the skin when presented with the options in Mixamo. What this means is that the file only includes the data for the animation. In the next video, we're going to get our Mixamo characters animating in Unity. We're going to learn about animation states, how we can retarget animations from one character to another, and how we can blend animations together. I hope you're excited to explore Unity's animation system a little more in the coming videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I'll be happy to check them out and help. If you learned something new today, please consider pressing that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm really excited to keep learning together. But that's all for today, and I'll see you in the next video.